Document Day, Ellie. Bring us up to speed with what documents we have seen and haven't seen in the one today. Yeah, John, by the time this is all over, every person in the United States is going to be an expert on search warrants and how they work. I'm making that my goal. Now, there are three primary documents involved in any search warrant. There is the search and seizure warrant itself. There is the receipt for property. And then there's the big document that we're looking for today, the affidavit. Let's just remind ourselves of what these are. First of all, the warrant itself. This is a fairly straightforward three-page document. It's already public. We've already seen it. The most important thing we learned from this document is what crimes DOJ is investigating. We got the listing of the statutes. 793, mishandling of defense information, part of the Espionage Act. 2071, concealment or destruction of official federal government documents. And 1519, that's obstruction. Now, the second document, receipt for property, also a three-page document. We've also seen this already. It is public. The most important thing we learned here is generally that DOJ, when they searched Mar-a-Lago, seized various boxes of classified documents, including the highest level of classification, top secret SCI, which brings us to the affidavit. This is the document we're looking for today. This is different in kind from these two documents. The affidavit is a written narrative. If I had to guess, I would peg it maybe 50 to 100 pages where DOJ lays out the probable cause for the judge. Now, ordinarily, that document remains private, under seal. Nobody sees it unless and until somebody gets charged with a crime or unless and until years later when a case is closed. But in this case, a group of media organizations, including CNN, made a motion to the judge. They said, because there's so much public interest in this case, we want to see the affidavit. Now, DOJ initially said, oh, no, this is way too confidential. We cannot reveal it. But the judge, Judge Reinhard, said, DOJ, I do think we need to provide a little more to the public than usual. Propose some redactions for me, and I'll let you know DOJ submitted those redactions. And the judge says, OK, I agree with these. So today, we're going to see a partially redacted version of that affidavit. Look, I, I love in this document that we have it all blurred out here. <laughs> because the question is, how much of it will be unblurry by the end of the day? What do you think is likely to be revealed and not revealed? Yeah, so we know pretty much for sure what will not be in there. Yes, there will be plenty of black redaction ink. The judge specified what does not need to be in there. That includes three things. First, the identities of witnesses, law enforcement agents, or uncharged parties. You wouldn't see the proper names anyway. It would say witness one. But DOJ, I believe, is going to take out any information that you could read into who it is. Second of all, the investigation strategy, direction, scope, sources, and methods. That's very broad. DOJ wants to guard that very carefully. They don't want to tip off the other side. And finally, grand jury information. That means anyone, if there has been anyone who's testified in front of the grand jury or anything they've gotten through a subpoena. That said, there still are some really important things that we will learn, I believe, today that I'm going to be looking for. First of all, more detailed descriptions of the statutes, the laws at play here. If you look at what we know already, all we have is these numbers, mm -hmm. 793, 20, you know, but it, when we get the document today, I believe we will get some detail. For example, with the federal government documents piece of this, there are different crimes for concealing, for destroying, for hiding, for transmitting. We could learn more about that. Second of all, we could learn more about the course of negotiation between the archives and DOJ and the Trump lawyers. We're getting great reporting on this all week. We know that that negotiation went on for over a year, but we could get the definitive, detailed version of that from DOJ. Third, we could learn about what documents were recovered before the Mar-a-Lago search, because remember, Trump and his team sent documents to the archives, and there was a subpoena. DOJ subpoenaed some documents. So they got this other set of documents that we really know nothing about. And finally, non-sensitive aspects of the investigation, meaning any part of the investigation that falls outside of these three things could be very little, could be nothing. But these four things really could tell us quite a bit about the search. Very quickly, the fact yeah. that they agreed to this pretty quickly you know, uh, DOJ submitted their redactions. The judge said, OK, let's release him. Does it indicate they gave him something that he was OK with? Yeah, I think that the goal for DOJ here is let's give the judge enough so that he feels like we're putting something meaningful out in the public. All right. That's not the only thing right. happening today in terms of legal matters surrounding the search of Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. So earlier this week, Donald Trump's lawyers submitted this motion to a different judge in Florida, basically asking for three things. First, they said we want a special master, a neutral third party to come in review the documents for any privilege. We want a more detailed receipt for property. We saw the receipt before. And we want the government to give us back any inadvertently seized documents. Not really too remarkable and of an ask. I mean, all of these things there is precedent for. The problem is Trump's legal team just blew it. The filing is a mess procedurally, 
The lawyering was so bad, it was hard to look at. It made my teeth hurt to read this because he blew it. And what did the judge say in Florida? She rejected it. She basically said, why now? This motion is coming too early. Why me? Why not the other judge? And what exactly do you want? I actually think they were fairly clear about what they wanted. And so the judge said, okay, lawyers, go back to the drawing board. Do it right this time. File by Friday. So that's coming today as well. File by today. Decision today seems up. Unlikely or impossible. Oh, no. Well, they got to get it right first, but no, there, there won't be a decision today. All right, Ellie Honig, thank you for explaining this. You should be a teacher. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give it a shot. All right, thanks. thanks. <laughs> While we wait to see what happens there, let's bring in attorney and contributing columnist at the Washington Post, George Conway. George, thanks for joining us this morning. I, I wonder if you were surprised by how quickly the judge moved here. No, not at all. I don't think I think the judge was going to show deference to the Justice Department's redactions, uh, no matter what. And I think also the Justice Department, as Ellie just said, was going to give the judge enough to feel that, that so that the judge could feel that um, he was providing some information to the public. And if you think about it, as Ellie points out, there are a lot of things that can be put out there that wouldn't affect the investigation. Uh, generic information about how documents are classified, uh, background information like that. And then the statutory language, it will be interesting to see if they put the, some of the statutory language in the affidavit and focus on particular words in it. That could tell us a lot exactly, that could tell us a lot about what the nature of the thinking about what the potential crimes are here. And so, you know, and it may be that they, and there's correspondence with NARA, as, as Ellie points out, and also it could be that they decide that they could release things that Trump already knows that we don't. Um, the, that would, might not jeopardize, they may decide that might not jeopardize the investigation. So, so there might be some interesting things here, but I think mostly we're going to see a very long document with lots of black marks through it. And I think the inter one interesting part about it will be, how long is this thing? How, how, how long is it? How big? We'll know. And we'll know pretty soon. As the case is, noon is the deadline. Both you and Ellie focus, George, on we may learn more about what statutes are at play here or exactly what parts of them, the language. Are you speaking specifically about the one that deals with concealment, destruction, obstruction? What would you look for there? Yeah, I would look at, I mean, if they, if they you know, we, when lawyers write documents like this, sometimes they put italics on the particular words that they're they're focused on. And it could be there's language about concealment, there's language about destruction, there's language that, that you know, if they if they decided to highlight those words or discuss those words in a little in a little detail, that, that might tell us what facts they might be seeing. But again, I, you know, this is this is just speculation. We're really just going to have to wait it out and see what they what we find. Well, George, as a reporter who has covered Trump for a while, we have seen, you know, with the Mueller investigation, with other circumstances where they have taken things and used them to their advantage in a sense where maybe all of this information isn't known. I'm thinking of when Attorney General Barr came out to summarize the Mueller report before it was publicly available. With this, given there is going to be a lot of black on this affidavit, do you have a concern that they could potentially basically try to leverage this and each side is going to say this is what it is, this is what it means, and it kind of leaves everyone else in the dark on what the actual facts are given they're redacted for, for the reasons that the Justice Department laid out? Well, I think the Trump people are going to spin it however they're going to spin it, and it's probably going to be in a, mis in a misleading and untruthful way. That said, the problem that they have is they don't have even a semblance of a defense here. They haven't. Ar it's been almost three weeks now since the search warrant was executed, and they haven't articulated a single reason why he should be should have been allowed to take these documents, why he had them, and, and what legal justification he possibly could have had to have them, and what legal justification he possibly could have had to have retained the documents after they were repeatedly requested. So I don't really think anything that they say is going to fly. I think what all this, this affidavit can do is to add more heft and more substance to uh, what we already know about Trump having stolen these documents, which is pretty damning. And I think one thing that's important to point out is the Trump team hasn't seen this affidavit. The government is not required to show it to them, so they haven't actually seen what's in it. They've publicly called for it to be released, but not actually in court. That's a great point. And the things that they have tried to lean into, the timeline, the, the thing that John Solomon, a Trump ally, uh, released, even when they think or posit that they help them, it turns out that in some cases it has backfired a bit, George. 
Yeah, I mean, as I've said, they, they want to have this every which way. They want to pretend that there's something nefarious going on by the fact that the search warrant affidavit has not been disclosed and, and they're making a big deal out of what the mystery behind what's there. But they don't actually ask for it. They didn't actually stand up in court and ask for it because they know that if the whole thing were released, it would contain a damning narrative, the, the narrative that, that justified the magistrate judge to determine that there was probable cause that crimes were committed. And, and, th and so what, what they're doing here is they're trying to have it both ways. And they're trying to say, oh, whoa, it's terrible that, that we don't have the basis with this affidavit. And at the same time, um, they really don't want us to see it. And then the third thing they want to do is they, they would like to see it um, because they want to know who's squealing on him and it's yeah. mostly his people his attorneys have been very clear that they do want to know who the witnesses are they say that they think it'll come out eventually it might not